So let's uh, let's read 22, 23, and 24. We'll pick up 22. We said that last week, but we'll pick it up again. Start with 22. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also, he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man, wherein he is called, therein abide with God. All right, uh, being called a servant, your Lord's free man. What does that mean? How can slaves, doulos, douloi, be free? Because Christ bought us, if we're, if we're in Christ, we're free in him, no matter whether they were still slaves to the Roman government when he's writing this. And that word servant does mean doulos, which just means slavery. Uh, Christ's servant, being free, we're Christ's servants. Then 23, you read that. What does this mean, you're bought with a price? What's that mean? Who, first of all, who's the ye referred to? Christians. Just the believers, genuine, true Christians. Does, believe, does it refer to unbelievers? Uh, no. Uh, now, in a sense, it does. <laughs> He's talking about ye. All right, the Christians there. But they're bought with a price. But what about the whole world in that sense? Yes. Are they also? Yes. Yeah. Well, what do the hyper say about that? Do they believe the whole world has been brought with this yeah. price? What do they say? Who's who? Just for whom did Christ die? Just the elect, a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. And we think it's very clear. The, the, let's say John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Love the world. Who's included in that? Everyone. See, they have to risk translate the world of the elect. See, this not doesn't say that. He loved the whole world. And then it says, what does it mean, whosoever? Does that mean just the elect? That means ever, whosoever believeth in him. Does that mean that everyone has the ability to believe in Christ if they will? Yes. yes. But the, like the people that are hyper say saying, no. If you're not elect, you can't believe. Absolutely can't. Impossible believe. It's a horrible thing. And when you preach the gospel, you can't say, Christ died for your sins to the whole audience because they don't know whether all of them are elect. So you can't even say that. See, uh, this was a man I told you many times before when I was teaching at Shelton College. Uh, this man, Nigel Lee from South Africa, was a hyper Calvinist. And when I told him, Christ died for the sins. Oh, you can't say that they may not be saved. A horrible thing, these hyper Calvinists. Can't even, you can't even preach the gospel to these people. They're very angry. But he's bought with the price. What was the price? Blood, Blood, Blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And uh, certainly ye refers to the Christians, but also the unsaved. Now, because the unsaved people were bought with the price, does that mean they're all saved? No. no. But sometimes the hyper Calvinists say that's what we believe. Well, if Christ died for everyone, then everybody's got to be saved. What is the answer to that problem? They have to receive the, they have to receive the gift of Christ. They have to receive Christ in order to be saved. The penalty was paid, but then you've got to believe Christ and receive him as your Savior. It is not the will of God that any should perish. Not the will of God, but that all should come to repentance. Not the will of God that any should perish. And uh, if it's a gift, it's just like we've said many times. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Hannah, maybe you can give our friends the pens. We don't give them. You get Please, the three, because they weren't, oh, I guess, well, you got one, but two, at least we two. Yeah, we got the special pens uh, ah. that have our names in Bible Free Baptist Church. And got, ah. so, on. so thank you, Anna. Appreciate that. So we got the game out last week and you were out here. So Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Very nice. So uh, I forget where we were. What was our last question? But I mean, what did we say? Oh yes, not. No, oh yeah, we, we did. We say John three sixteen. Yes, we did not know. What does the whosoever mean? Again, we ask that same question. Everybody, but what do you have to do? Whosoever believeth on him, on him, who's the him? The Lord Jesus Christ shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So all the many many verses are there. Some verses that seem to teach hyper Calvinism. A few that seem to teach. Now, what is the rule of? Of Bible interpretation. When the plain sense of the scripture makes common sense. Common sense. Seek no other sense, sense. Except the light of And also, another type of interpretation of scripture is uh, you must interpret the small, insignificant, tiny verses in the light of the massive government, by massive scripture's title. So we, these few little things that seem to, to contradict eternal life by those that treat. 
we interpret the light of the general things. Principle John 3 16 is very is very clear. Now some of the verse, for example, no man can come unto me except the Father draw him. See, they say that's that's hyper Calvinism. But also another verse, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He's already drawn all men. See? So you see we can interpret, we can explain these seemingly other type of scriptures. And so always interpret the vague ones in the light of the clear ones, crystal clear ones. And so that's how, but you're bought with a price. Price of the death of Christ. Was that a voluntary sacrifice or an involuntary sacrifice? Voluntary. 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 No man taketh my life from me. I lay it down on myself. That's what he said in the Gospel of John, wasn't it? And uh, I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. And so I uh, bought with a price. And because of that, what's the conclusion in verse 23? Yeah, the service of man. If he bought us, for instance, in the preceding verse, being a servant, that's doulos, which is a slave person doing a master's will. And the, if the price was paid, he bought us off the slave market. Mm-hmm. Are we any longer the slaves of Satan? No, no he's no longer slaves his of slaves of righteousness. That's right, slaves of service of righteousness. And it's because he bought us with that price. So therefore, we should not be servants or slaves of men. Do some people... Are they servants of men? Yes. yes even, are some are even born again Christians servants of men? Yes. yes. That's not, shouldn't be. We should serve the Lord. Now, sometimes, the, sometimes the, the teachings of men and women contradict the, the teachings of the Bible. All the time. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, now, in the light of that, which teachings should we obey? The servants of men or the teachings of the Bible? Word of God. Now, let me ask you this. When you obey the Word of God, is there sometimes a great penalty that you must receive? Yes. Did some people receive it just recently? Like that young lady was in Kentucky. Kim Davis was her name. Mm-hmm. Uh, she wouldn't marry inter- interracial people. Uh, and, of course, no, 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 no. excuse me, yeah, homosexual people. Excuse me, not homosexual I'm sorry. It was one way, men and men, women and women, the, the homosexual marriages. She was opposed to that. And uh, when she was sworn into office many years before that, the state had no rule like that. She, she didn't come into that, but all of a sudden Obama, the Supreme Court, you know. But uh, so she paid a price. Now, other Christians, what about the person that sells bread or makes cakes and won't make cakes for the homosexual marriages? What about those people? Did they suffer? They get arrested. They get arrested, they get arrested and fined. There's another instance. What was the other instance? Uh, I don't know, there's several instances, but anyway, sometimes, in fact, it's going to get worse, as we know. Yes, John? Uh, when the Huckabee campaign uh, put together that, um, you remember when uh, Kim Davis came out with Mike Huckabee uh, celebrating her release? Yes, I remember that. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz tried to get on the stage and platform to join her and Mike Huckabee. But the stupid, stupid-looking little Huckabee campaign aide blocked Ted Cruz from going on the stage. So he mm-hmm. had to be like where everybody else was. Yes, yes, but he agrees with the same position. Yeah. yeah. So uh, sometimes we must pay the price. He was born in Huckabee's territory. Yeah, that's true. So, so <laughs> there are other things. Other things. Now, I read one announcement. I think it was last week. Oh, excuse me, Anna. Shouldn't there be a solidarity amongst the people that agree on this issue? They shouldn't yes. be, well, I, I don't want you to be president because I want to be president, therefore we can't be seen together. Yeah. Right. Well, know. if that's true, that he was forbidden to come, I read that too, John. I read that too, that uh, Ted Cruz was not speaking on the platform. If that's true, <coughs> Huckabee's campaign was wrong. They should unite. See, he was there in the same place and he was with Kim Davis. They should be in the same thing, see. But anyhow, people people are where they are. Now, there's a, a week or so ago, I read an article saying that here's what's going to happen. Churches that say homosexuality is a sin will be closed down, and pastors that continue could be either fined or sent to jail. Now, this is something they're working on right now. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have more imp- more of these dangers coming along. Yes. What was that written? Uh, I don't remember. It was last week I said it's in the uh, have it in writing, but. Uh, it's up in my office. I'll be able to show it to you. Yeah, but the Constitution says the church is the world okay. Does Obama follow the Constitution, really? Yes. Yes. No, he doesn't follow the Constitution. Well, does he follow the First Amendment? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, Anthony, 
He doesn't follow the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Doesn't follow the Second Amendment, bare arms. He's a he's a anti-constitutionalist. Why don't you wise up, Anthony? Why are you so stupid on that? Because if anybody wants to sue him for doing that, they can do it. Nobody's done that. Oh, you know nobody's going to sue the president. He can't get yes, the, they can. can't get the first base they out. Can. You know, yes, they no, can. he only really can't. He just wins all the time. Dan, Pastor Dan, go ahead. I, mean, I think there's been other cases against other presidents. I mean, it's right a bunch of lawyers. But this is an email from Wisconsin. Yes. Uh, Pastor, we, uh, when we were at the Hyper Capitalist Church, uh, when we told him, the pastor, John 3:16. He would laugh and said, the world is, is cosmos, and how can he love the cosmos? Stay away from uh, the Christian liberty in Arlington Heights, Illinois, they are hyper Calvinists, and it's from the Kosas. Let's wave to Wendy Kosak and Rick over in Wisconsin. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate that. Yes, the hyper Calvinist church used to attend there. So Ray, she knows about that. So we've got to be the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God, no matter come what may, whatever the ridicule is from it or anything else. And uh, so then we did we read 24, did we? Yeah, we read 24. Who's this brethren referred to here? I think we read 20. Did we read 22, 23? 22, 23, 24. 22, 23, and 24. Okay, who's the brethren referred to? Christians. Believers in Corinth, and by extension, those Christians, genuine Christians today. But what is how is brethren used in the Scripture of the King James Bible? It's men, not every man. No, no, but how is it? I know, but how is it used in the King James Bible, brethren? It means <coughs> men and women that are saved. See, it, it's it's a it's a whole thing. In other words, uh, when you take the word human, human, does that refer just to man? No. No. See, so now the same way with this word, brethren. It means inclusively saved, born again Christians, whether men or women. Sometimes it's male, but male in the Greek is on air. On air is male. But this is uh, anthropos, which can be men or women. In this case, right. it's brother. Yes, Pastor Dan. The context in this particular instance here in this passage would indicate both men and women. Perhaps there are some examples we could cite that would just limited the men. Right, in some But here, but here is, is part of it. it's both. That's right. We're all now, not with Christ. We're all about with the price. That's right. Men and women, boys and girls. Those that are lost from from Adams all the way down to the end of time. Uh, now, let every man where abide, wherein he's called, abide with God. What does it mean? A man wherein he is called. Whether he's a slave or whether he's free. All right. Slave or free, just let him abide. Whether he's married or not married, whatever. Let him abide with God. What is that in, why is that included? Most important, part. important part. Most important part. Be sure they're with the Lord. Yes, Anthony. Anthony, you say. Agree with God. Agree with God. Yes, Tammy. Sometimes when people seek to be out of their condition and they're no longer content with their relationship with the Lord, so mm -hmm. they strive too much to change their situation that they are no longer in fellowship with the Lord. Right. So God must be a part of this abiding with Himself, abiding uh, with God. And let's read 25, 26, and 27. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, and I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. All right, 20, 25. Uh, he's taking now concerning virgins. What are they? Unmarried, unmarried women. Unmarried women. Uh, pardon me? Yeah, no sexual contact. Well, pardon me? Fawn, what did you say? How do you know it's not men and women? Because later on it's talking about men. Well, it could be. Those those who have no who have never been married or never had any sexual relations with one or the other. Uh, no commander of the Lord. What does that mean? It's his opinion. All right. Don't direct commandment. Now, let, yeah, Anna, you have something? Oh, well, with reference to virgins, I was just remembering, and I think it's Revelation, uh, when it talks about 144,000, mm -hmm. it describes them as virgins. Yes. That they are clearly men. Clearly the men, that's right. So there's a virgin men, virgin women, non-sexual relation with either men or women. Yes, Tammy. Based on the context, wouldn't it be 
men and women because they yes. should be abiding in this yes. state. Yes, yes, I think it's both of them. In this case, it's both of them. So it's a word that can be used depending on the context with both. Pastor Dan. Uh, this is from Jim Kanata. Well, thank you for teaching and preaching sound doctrine. Blessing by this morning him, Tammy, Mrs. Waite, uh, good piano, Mrs. Waite, Jim Kanata from Maine, from Massachusetts. That's just wave to Jim Kanata from Massachusetts. Thank you, Jim. He's watching us, and we appreciate that. He's hearing it okay. He's hearing it okay. That's good, James. James, so that's fine. So by the context, this is both male and female, versus those who are not married and not having sex relations. I have no command. In other words, now let me ask you this. No direct commandment of the Lord. When was Paul directly commanded of the Lord? Directly. On what occasion? Sorry, the backside of the desert. Backside of the desert. How, long, how many years was he on the backside of the desert? Three, three years. And three the Lord years. taught him, just like he taught the disciples three years when they were here. Uh, yes. with him before he went up. So it's direct, uh, and they taught us all the truths of the New Testament, the church versus Israel, lots of teaching, direct. But uh, this says no command is directly of the Lord. Now let me ask you this, just because it wasn't directly of the Lord in those three years, does that mean that these words were not given by the Lord Jesus through the Holy Spirit to the writers? No. doesn't mean that. See, in other words, there was given, all the original writers were God-breathed, weren't they? Inspired of God, God-breathed. Remember we read uh, last week, the given to the the words were given to the writers, and the writings were put down. The words were yeah, they were given to the writers. Yes, they're given to the writers. So remember, we we read last <coughs> Sunday morning, I believe it was, uh, in John 14, the Lord Jesus told his disciples, "I have yet many things to say unto you, you cannot bear them now. Albeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. We shall not speak of himself." <coughs> But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. And so he, the Lord Jesus, is the one that's the author of all the words, and the Holy Spirit, the conduit to the human writers. And that's how it works. So these are God's words through the Holy Spirit, but not directly in that three years context. I think that's the way to interpret that. <coughs> Yet he gives his judgment as one that obtained mercy of the Lord. To be faithful. When did Paul obtain mercy from the Lord? His salvation. His salvation. On what occasion was that salvation? On what occasion was that? The road to Damascus. What was where was Paul going? What was he going to do at Damascus? Kill Christians. Christians. To slay Christians, imprison Christians. And so the Lord he obtained mercy. Did he fight the Lord? No. No. He was he was conducive, he was receptive. Yes. Wasn't he told it's hard for you to kick against the bricks? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So he had, he had some, some, some resistance. resistance at one uh, point in time. Yes. Oh, yeah. But did he fight when the Lord said, what, what was the Paul's question that he asked the Lord Jesus Christ? Who are there? Who are there? Who are there? Where was the Lord Jesus at this time? He's in heaven. In heaven. And the question Paul asked him was what? Who art thou, as you say? And what did he say? What did the Lord Jesus say? The Lord Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Mm. And what then uh, did Paul ask? What question did Paul ask the Lord? What wilt thou have me to do? On that matter, did Paul fight him? No. no. What did the Lord tell him to do? First, go where? Ananias, and he will take... What happened to his eyes? He, got he was blinded. And he went to Ananias, and Ananias, you will receive thy sight. So, uh, Paul graciously was saved. God had mercy on him. Now, when Paul was changed from a from a Pharisaical Jew to a Christian, was he angry at that change? Was Paul angry? No. Was he upset? He's very happy. He's glad. He's thankful. And he wrote all these letters. God used him. So he is obtained mercy, Lord, to be faithful. What does that mean, to be faithful? What does it mean? To Faithful to what? To God. To, to God. Where do you find the Lord? In the Scriptures. In, the scriptures. in other words, the Lord doesn't re reveal things well, some other he way. Did to Paul. He did to Paul, but of course, writing to the Corinthians, uh, of course, it still was having revelations there until uh, 90 or 100 A.D. when the Bible was completed. But now today, we find the will of the Lord where? The In the Word of God, the Scriptures. Is it important to have the right scriptures? Yes. It certainly is. <laughs> Otherwise, you're in trouble. 
And so to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ as revealed in his words. Is that easier or hard to be faithful to the words of God? Easier or hard? Tough. Tough. It's, it's tough. It's not easy. Uh, should you do it no matter what's easy or hard? Yes. yes. Are, are there some things we've got to do whether it's easy or hard <laughs> in life? <laughs> I mean, you know, nobody likes to wash the car, but if it's necessary, you wash the car. See, it's, you're faithful to do what has to be done. Yeah, Tam? Well, some things are easier to do than other things. Yes, that's right. But uh, mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I'm glad that Paul was faithful to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, did we read 26? I forget. Yes. yes. Okay. So I suppose uh, for the present distress, what do you think he's referring to for the present distress? Persecution. Persecution. It was going to come, wasn't it? This is about 59 A.D. roughly when he wrote this. 59. When did the real persecution come in the church in those days? What is it? Well, what happened in 70 A.D.? Oh, Titus, 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 Titus. To the, destroyed the, the temple of Jerusalem. And there's lots of persecution, uh, even even earlier. But so 60. To, it's only about 11 years later. So mm-hmm. this could be a reference. Who knows? Is this Nero? Uh, it is could, this Nero? It could be Nero or what's the one that destroyed the temple? Titus. 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 Uh, 70 A.D. So uh, I don't know whether where Nero. Was. He wasn't a, he wasn't whether he's before or after Titus. He wasn't a Titus, just a general, general. Or yeah, maybe he's a general. Was Nero in charge then? I don't know who the emperor was. Gonna look it up. Yeah, Anna's going to look it up. She's a mastermind on that. All right. Oh, here, here's looked it up already. Jacob. Okay. Oh, Rob. Rob, how you doing from Chicago? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, my comment is for my friend Anthony. Yes. And this is... Uh, I got, I got a book for Anthony that was written just for people to enlighten them to what's going on today. And the name of the book is called Government Zero. Uh-huh. No borders, no language, no culture. And it's, it, it, there is an agenda going on. And I'd like to make this challenge to Anthony. And I will gladly buy him this book. It's by a Jewish man, unsaved. Michael Savage, and he wrote this book specifically to enlighten people who are, are, and I'll say this, blind to what's going on today. And Anthony, my friend, I'll be glad to buy you this book. It just came out a week ago, and, but you got to read it, or I don't want to waste my money. I can either send it to you or pass it away, but I would love to have you to read this you. and to take the challenge of what's in this book and enlighten yourself to what's going on. But uh, that's okay. because I care about you. So you can okay. accept the challenge. I'll, I'll either send it to Pastor Wait or give it to you. You can call me or let Pastor Wait know what's going on. But okay. it's Government Zero by Michael Savage. And I urge everyone else to get it. And he wrote it again for people who don't understand what's going on today. And it's written out very clearly. It's documented. It's uh, the truth. And I urge you to read it, and oh. everyone else. Okay, thanks, Rob. That's West Way, Rob. Wait, Rob. If you get it, will you read it, Anthony? He's going to send it yeah, to but you. If, if you have yes, it, he'll send it to will you. you read it, though? Yes. You're sure? Sure. Okay. They sued Obamacare, and it was constitutional to the Supreme Court. Okay. <laughs> they can sue him anytime they want. Anthony, just so you read it, because he's not going to waste his money. It. You're yeah, not going to read it. Book. Yeah, Bill, go ahead. Read it. There is another source of information which is irrefutable, and perhaps Anthony would like this more. It's called the American Center for Law and Justice. It's a group of lawyers. They are the ones who represent most of these Christian cases in court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of them in front of the Supreme Court, some of them in local courts. You can get all the details from their yeah, court cases, the all their victories over the government. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of information uh, through them. And they they do have a website. Uh, yeah. I don't know, Anthony, if you've got a, web, a computer or not. Oh. You, okay, well, it, um, perhaps uh, somebody can print something out for you. It's called the American Center for Law Nobody's and Justice. Nobody's interested in doing that. Jay Sekulow is uh, the head of that uh, all organization. All right. All right, thank you. Back to verse 25. Yes, Anna, I'm sorry. Okay, so Nero was the only emperor 
until 68 AD. However, oh. persecution did occur under Nero after the fire of Rome, which was then blamed on Christians. But Good. in regards to Titus, he was not emperor at the time. His father, Vitellius, was emperor in 70 AD. Uh -huh. So Titus, at that time, was a son of the emperor when he was campaigning. Later, he did become emperor after his father's death. Good. Well, thank you for that history. So it was a general thing. Yep. Yeah, I so appreciate it. that very much. So it was Nero. So it was Nero. You're right. Mara, Barbara was right. Was but was was Nero at the time of the fall of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. Vitellius was emperor. Mm -hmm. However, persecution began under Nero. Yes, earlier. After the, the Rome was burning. Right. So now let me yes. Try and figure out when that was. Yeah, Barbara said it was Nero earlier, so that's fine. All right. Uh, so maintain the Lord to be uh, oh, faithful. Then, are the present distress? We said that there was persecution of the Christians. That's a present distress. So, what does he say? Uh, good for a man, so to be. So to be what? In verse 26. A to be a virgin. To be a virgin. Stay unmarried and not to have anything to do. Uh, so that's 26. Did we read 27 yet? Yes. yes. We did. Okay. Art thou bound as a wife? What does that mean? Married. married, probably married unto a wife. What is his answer? What should be the case then? What does that mean? See, not to be loose. Stay married. Don't try to divorce people. So I'll stick with it. Uh, then art thou loose from a wife? What does that mean? Could be a widower. Could be could be unmarried. Loose from a wife. What's it? Seek not a wife. What does that mean? Don't get married again. Just stay where you are. Uh, we read 27. Did we, we stop at 27, did we? Yes. yes okay, let, let's read 28, 29, and 30 together. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the same time is short. It remaineth that both they which have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not. All right, then verse number 28. Uh, if thou marry, who's the thou refer back to? Christians. Christians, either, either men or women. Uh, well, the unmarried. In other words, you have a wife, don't seek to be loosed. If you have a, a loose for the wife, seek not a wife. Uh, now, if they're, if they're never been married and so on, thou hast not sinned. That's what they're saying, right? Uh, if they marry, and if a virgin marry, is that the same as the Roman Catholics worship Virgin Mary? No, no, no. Says if a virgin marry. Nothing to do with Virgin. Nothing to do with Virgin Mary. See if the virgin marry, I mean, R R Y. Just want to ask that question to see if anybody's listening. <laughs> now, if a virgin marry, what's true? She's not sinned. In other words, uh, people who are not married, it's all possible if they're. Now, what should? Should be uh, pertain in that marriage. What should be the bounds of that marriage? I don't have trouble. Well, but in the, just start with the marriage to start with. What should be true if a genuine believer, Christian, saved person, married somebody sinned. else? I know, but what should be true of the, the marriage situation? One wife. Don't be on you equal you. And okay, not equal. What does that mean, Rick? That's it means right. Means a Christian should not marry a non-Christian. Non uh, that's right. A genuinely born again Christian, true Christian, should never marry once is not saved or unsaved. You stick with together. That's that's very important, isn't it? Amen. A lot of times there's mixed marriages where you have the Christian marrying a non-Christian. Now, I think last week we talked about people that were both lost and one was saved. Well, stick with their husband. Maybe he'll be saved. Or stick with the wife. Maybe she'll be saved. But here, uh, yeah, then seek wife, make sure that they're both born again. Now, what happens when there's a mixed marriage, saved and lost? Trouble, what? trouble lots right. of trouble, lots of trouble. What happens to the children? They get confused. They get confused. You don't know whether they're going to be saved. Well, you don't know whether they're following the saved one or the lost one. Yeah, the scripture says they're holy or they're now holy, the children. They would be unclean if they were That's right. If, if they're both lost to start with and one gets saved, that's, that's true. So, uh, verse, uh, what were we, 28, was it, 28? Yeah, 29. 29. 
Yeah, we're in 20. 20, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mary, that thou hast not sinned. In other words, make sure. And if a virgin, Mary, she has not sinned. In other words, this is a, a woman with a she. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, nevertheless, what's going to happen? In verse 28, what does Paul predict? I have trouble in the flesh. Trouble in the flesh. Uh, but I spare you. What's that mean? I spare you. That's what I want to know. Anna? Okay. What does that mean? I spray you. I don't know. What does it mean? I'll, I'll take away the trouble. I, I spare In other words, but uh, what do you think the trouble in the flesh would be here in Paul's situation? He's, he's not going to go into detail, I suppose. He's going to spare him from the details, perhaps. Right? Yeah, I spare you, maybe for the detail. I think I'll spare you from the detail. That's good, Pastor Dan. But what do you think the trouble would be here? Religious training for the children. Who was the emperor earlier? Yeah. Nero. And who's the emperor now? Rodellus. Okay. And who's going to be later on? Yes. <laughs> so could that refer to the trouble in the flesh? Yes. Remember, yes. In, in the gospel, remember in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, it speaks of the last days. Yes. And there's a, there's a person... There was a preacher, he's not a Christian type of preacher, but he said he has scriptural proof that women should not have top knots, you know, up in their hair. And the verse they use is what? Top not come down. That's right. He's on the house top not come down. It's top not house come top down. Top one word. I know, I realize. But that's how they interpret <laughs> misinterpret the scripture. Anyway, but then in, Ma in Matthew, it's a joke. In Matthew, it talks about lots of trouble. Lots of trouble. Persecution is going to come in the latter times. That's right, Yavon. It could mean that, but it also could mean that if one's <clears> saved and one's lost, there's trouble. No, well, but they don't want to have it's marriage like that. He's not granting not marriages of, of unequal yokes. They do. They're, they're, well, that's no, I know. What it's talking about. He's talking about two people marrying. Yes, they're married. I think that uh, what this could mean, too, is whether you're equally yoked or, well, equally. Both Christian. You have to learn. To live with one another. Oh, yes. Because you haven't been learning right. this. And, you know, you have to just adjust to this right. person. Right, exactly. Place, and you have to, he has to adjust to you. That's right. And there's going to be conflicts. Yes. And there's going to, you know, yes. until you get things. And then it depends if you marry, it's like if you marry a Catholic or you marry someone and you've got a different, you both believe in Jesus Christ maybe, but you've got mm -hmm. a difference in Well, now let me ask you a question, Mary. Is that an equal yoke for a born again yeah, saved Christian to marry a Roman Catholic that's lost? <laughs> that's but important. I think even like if you have a Methodist or a Baptist yeah. or you have that conflict, Different conflict yeah. in, well, oh no, we believe this yeah. or no, we Good. believe that. Let's, let's continue that. Now, Pastor Dan's got something from the outside. The Supreme Court is from, from Charles. Charles Creasman from Illinois. The Supreme Court um, skirted the law by the um, uh, Affordable Care Act and decided. I was declared in a tax when Roberts copped out Charles. That's right. Let's wave to Charles in Illinois. That's right. What did he say? He, he said, well, he, he's, he's giving his, his opinion. He, he says he declared, he declared, a, declared a, a tax, a tax, yeah. yeah. What? And he, he believes they skirted the law about the Affordable Care Act. Yes. And declared it a tax. That's right. It, it wasn't a tax. a tax. That's right. It's wrongly declared a constitution. They wrongly declared it a tax. It, was it a wasn't tax. a tax. It wasn't they a tax. They called it a tax. I suppose there's something about the court can't necessarily. Anyway, so that's when Roberts, yes. the Chief Justice, copped out. Says, yes. Or, or that's what and another thing that they did. He voted in favor of constitution. Another thing that the Constitutional Supreme Court did, Pastor Dan, is uh, when it came to if it specifically in the law. <clears throat> Those that states go ahead and give whatever it is. Well, the state is considered the, the entire 50. No, 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 but the, the local states, the, the 50 states, if they say that's all right, then they can go ahead and have it, whatever it is. I don't know the details. But, but about state 30, doesn't mean state. No, 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 no but the, the states, remember, it says very specifically, and then they copped out on that too. And they said, go ahead and give the thing. Even if you don't agree with it, see? And so it made the states who didn't agree with this Affordable Care Act, whatever it is, they're spared. Yeah, Anna, go ahead. Okay, so in reference to the fire of Rome, uh, Tacitus, in one of the earliest non-Christian references to the origins of Christianity, notes that the population searched for a scapegoat and rumors held Nero responsible. 
to deflect blame, Nero targeted Christians. He ordered Christians to be thrown to the dogs, while others were crucified and burned. Very good. Thank you. That's a historical thing. Yes, Anthony. When the Supreme Court rules on the constitutionality of a federal law, that becomes the law of the entire United States, not just one state, the entire 50 states. No, Anthony, you're dead wrong. Yes. The Supreme Court can make no laws. That's right. Only they Congress, laws. only Congress can make laws. They can interpret laws, but they cannot make them. They don't make laws. They rule on <laughs> no, the no, laws, Anthony. and they say oh, wait a minute. it's constitutional or not. Now, Anthony, let me give you some hint on what the Constitution says and what these people no, say. The this, no, wait a minute. The decision they made was on one particular case, yeah. and they interpreted the case. Yeah. It's not for the whole thing. They can't make a law for the whole United States of America. No, they can't make a law. Only Congress shall make laws. Read your Constitution, Anthony. That's We're talking trouble. about a federal law. Uh, uh, Obamacare. <laughs> that was ruled by the Supreme Court to be constitutional. That means it's the law of the 50 states of America. They can't make a law. They don't make a law. They decided the law. <laughs> You're making a law out of it. That's dead wrong. But you're for Obama, so you, you know stick with him. We can't stand him. He's a, he, he's a traitor, he's a liar, and he's a deceiver. And you stick with him if you want to. If he's your buddy, he's against the Christian faith, he's against the word of God, he's for sodomites. He's for sodomites. Okay, go ahead, Anna, go ahead. I would just like to comment that just because the Supreme Court rules one way at some point in time, it could later reverse its decision. For example, in Plessy versus Ferguson, they were they had um, separate but equal clause and that saying that segregation was okay as long as things were equal. Mm -hmm. But in Brown versus Board of Education, they determined that things that were separate weren't actually equal. So then they overturned their in, a, in the fact of their decision that they made in Brown versus Board of Education. They overturned. Their previous decision in Plessy versus Ferguson. Therefore, there is still a possibility that That's these right. decisions that have been made in the past few months, which are concerning, could still be overturned. Yes. Back to Mary's question: trouble in the flesh. Is she finished? Our, yeah, we finished with that topic. What do you no, want no. some more? Go argue some if more, Anthony. We don't finished. agree with you. If she's finished, she's telling exactly what it is. It can be overturned in the future, but right now it's the law of the land. They can't make a law. They Only make a law. read the Constitution, Anthony. Only Congress shall make the law. Executive That's is supposed to obey law, about. and That's the, the Supreme Court about. is supposed to interpret the law, but not to make it. They didn't okay. make any law. Anthony, finish that topic. Mary is talking about trouble in the flesh. The differences are semantics. Trouble in the flesh, Mary. We're yeah. talking about that. Yeah. It's hard when you marry. Is any two people, a man and a woman, exactly the same? No. No, no they're not the same. No. You have differences. So that's wonderful because you have, one can learn from the other. And so it's difficulty. So if you marry, trouble in the flesh. Does that mean you shouldn't marry? He, he says he warns you. He spares you all the reasons of it. But uh, in other words, every one of us who've been married knows that we differ on things because we're not all the same. We don't agree on everything. But we patch it up and we keep going. Hey, Rick, yes, sir. Yeah, I was just going to say, society has not prepared people for marriage. Yeah. They haven't prepared men or women for marriage. We have no clue because the society's not taking us down the biblical road mm -hmm. about what roles really are. Yes. Like when we got married, I had no clue. Uh -huh. I mean, I was out there someplace, yeah. and I was following, you know, what well, we watch football all Sunday yeah. afternoon, yeah. and we do this, and yeah. she cooks. Yeah. And she has the babies and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Right. That's the mindset that society takes people into. Right. They don't prepare the men. So most men, like myself, have uh -huh. great difficulty when they uh, when they start out. Yeah. The church doesn't either. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Isn't it? Okay, Jacob from Texas. Go ahead, Jacob. Yes, sir. I'm looking at, at some verses 32 to about 39. And I think that that clears up the, the question of that, what you're all talking about. And, and we'll get to those as soon as we get. And uh, Anthony, uh, can you find a debate club or something? We're trying to study the Bible. 
Uh, Y'all have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's wave to Jacob in Texas. Jacob in Texas. Okay. All right. Let's go on down there to uh, Trouble in the Flesh. But I spare you the details, in other words. Did we read 29? Oh, Cass, go ahead. I just want to make a comment about what you were talking about. Yes. When I was uh, married like this gentleman over here, we were both Catholic. Yes. And everything was fine. And then Mm -hmm. I was turned 40-something, and I got saved. Well, he was still Catholic, and I was 40. And that's when the trouble started. Oh. Uh, It was very difficult years because we didn't connect. Yes. And uh, it was really really hard. But I stayed with it, and he stayed with it. And then he finally got saved. Finally got saved. It's really tough. It is tough. Because you don't think you like it all. No, that's right. Absolutely. All right, so trouble in the flesh. Now, did we read the next verse? Did we read that? 29? Did we read 29? No, not yet. Not yet. But we came to 28, and we finished that, didn't we? All right, let's read 29, 30, and 31 together. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they which have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. 5 verse 29. What's, who's the brethren referred to there? Christian believers. True Christians. must be men, because later on it talks about the wives. Well, again, it's it's in the scriptures when it's brethren. It's usually people, uh, well, usually believers. In, yes. In most cases, that's if the context tells us. I mean, yeah. yeah but it talks about wives in verse twenty-nine. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so I'm not sure if that means spouses or if that means wives. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, they they have wives. So anyway, it could be men, it could be women, but they're are they saved or lost? They're saved. They're saved. They're brethren. They're first, they're first the true Christians, and applying to the Corinthians and to other people today, by extension. Time is short. Again, what do you think that means? It's going to be about what she's talking about. All the, upheaval. All the trouble, the burning of the fire, so different things. Well, they Tammy? were also looking forward to the Lord's return. Yes, they were. And so the persecution would come. Time is short. It remaineth both they that have wives be as though they had none. What does that mean? Live to the Lord. I know, but what what happened a lot of times during these persecutions? Uh-huh. Maybe some of the men and women were were separated, maybe put in prison. Mm-hmm. Who knows? See, mm-hmm. uh, that may be the interpretation there, as though they had none. In other words, you don't see her; you're still married to her, but you don't see her. She's put off some other place, uh, separated. They acted like they didn't have any wives. That could be. I'm not sure, but that's. I think there's something else. Related, related to persecution, probably related to persecution that's going on. Mm-hmm. That, that's the, either the wives are going to be slain or they're going to be be separated from each other. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I understand the Muslims now, the Islamic uh, terrorists, uh, they separate the women from the men, different things, and they rape the women and the mm-hmm. and the men. Uh, some of them they kill. Uh, this is not. This doesn't refer to this, but uh, that's a, some of the things that they do now. Uh, they that weep as though they wept not. What does that mean? They just couldn't weep anymore. Time will come as though when they weep as though they wept not. What causes they weeping could, usually? They couldn't, they couldn't cry. They cried out. What causes weeping usually? Sorrow and, and pain. Sorrow, pain, different things, as though they wept not. This time is going to come. In other words, weeping... What did they do at the grave of Lazarus, who was dead? He, they wept. What did the Lord Jesus do? It's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus, Jesus wept. That's right. And so that was a sorrow. Their emotions were in neutral. All right. That's what I have written on the side of my Bible. Now, weep not, the Lord Jesus said. In other words, there's there's a time. Now, they that weep as though they wept not. Now, those that are weeping as though they didn't have any weeping. In other words, it's going to be... Rejoicing. I mean, I no more weeping. As though they wept not. They're going to be neutralized. Yes, they'll be neutral. What does this mean? Those that rejoice as though they rejoice not. They couldn't do anything. No, no feelings. Those are just the same as if they didn't rejoice. They're neutralized. They're feeling. That could be. Yes. Yvonne? Sometimes when people are uh, 
punished, I guess, so bad. Mm -hmm. You see them sometimes on television, and they're they're just nothing people. They've been so uh, hurt, emotionally hurt, mm -hmm. physically hurt. They have nothing left of emotions to them. Mm -hmm. What a, what about this other phrase? Those that buy as though they possessed not. What does that mean? That means buy not. Possess means they didn't buy anything. All right. Yeah, they so they're going to be able to hang on to. They didn't. They didn't. Know, they didn't hang on to it as if they didn't have anything. Uh, in other words, they were not. Everything taken they, away from them. It says they, they either buy, so they do buy. Mm -hmm. But then they possess not. So it's like they they hold on very loosely to what they have. Mm -hmm. steal they know it might be taken away. Could be. So they buy as though they possessed it, didn't have any possession at all. They still buy. Then the 31. Did we read 31 yet or not? They that use this world as not obeying. What does this world refer to? What's this world refer to? The world at that time. Uh, the world at that time? The environment. Environment, things around it that use this world. What do we mean that people use this world? It says for ill in my Bible, use for ill. Could be used for ill. For their own purpose. Yes. Not abusing it. How do you abuse the use of the world? What does First John 2.15 say? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes is the first, the lust of the eyes of the flesh, and pride of life. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So it could be using the world, not abusing it. There's abuse of the world. There's a worldliness. Should Christians be worldly? No. See, that's one of the titles that we have, worldly Christians, worldliness. Yeah, Vaughn. Uh, for fashion, I have written down a manner of life. So uh, for those that use the word for ill, it's not abusing it. For the manner of life of this world passeth away. Where'd you get that? And when you preach, I put the notes in. Oh, well, <laughs> <Seriously. laughs> My Bible's full of looks like I know everything. Well, that's right. That could be right. It could be. It could be correct. <laughs> uh, but not abusing it. The fashion of this. What, what fashion? What is the fashion of this world? Is it the same as it was a hundred years ago? Is it going to be the same as, the as tomorrow, ideas, 10 years from now? Yeah. What does it mean? They change all the they time. Change. They change. Okay. The ideas and philosophy. Ideas and philosophy. Could be the dress also, am I right? The yes. dress. Yes. You know, everybody changes. Everything. And uh, yeah. things go up, things go down, you know, different things. Fashion of the world, uh, what does it say about it? Passes away. Passes away. away. So this, this is an important thing. Did we read 32? I don't think we read no, 32. No, we didn't. No. Let's read 32, 34, and 35 together. 33 and 34. Oh, 32, 33, yes. Uh, but I would have you without careful, carefulness, he that is unmarried, care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married, careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she, she may be holy both in body and in spirit, but she that is married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. All right, uh, verse is a, is a 32, right? Uh, without carefulness. What does that in the sense of carefulness means what? Worry. Worry. See, care, it means, it means worry consumed with the cares of this world. Uh, be not careful. I would not be without care. Uh, Without carefulness. Anxiety, Anxiety. He that is unmarried careth for what? The things of the Lord. Now that's what they should do. Do all people married care for the things of the Lord? No. no. Do all, even all Christians, general Christians, compare for all no. things of the Lord? But that's what it should be. Makes good sense. Either is married, should care for. Is unmarried. Oh, unmarried, sorry. They are unmarried, should care for the things of the Lord and uh, be honest and faithful to the Lord in all things. That should be the way it would be. Uh, unmarried, yes. An unmarried person has more time to devote to the, yes. to the reading the scripture and exactly. And 
She doesn't have all the cares of the world. That's she right. And that's what, yes, Tammy. She's not, she's not diverted with the cares of her husband or the cares right. of her children. Right. That maybe, um, you know, consume thoughts. Thoughts and time consuming and different things and different things. So uh, they should care, those that are unmarried, completely for the things of the Lord. Uh, now, nuns that are unmarried, let's go to the Roman Catholic Church. Does that necessarily mean they're going to care for the things of the Lord? No. If they, no. See, they're, they're, not, they're not believers. They're not believers. What does the Roman Catholic Church say how to be saved? What is their? By works. By, works. by, works. Baptism. by their works, by baptism, baptism and uh, sacraments, sacraments, all these things, and following the traditions of Rome and different things, and uh, confession, all these different things. Works, 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 works. Mm -hmm. How many different ordinances do they have? There's seven sacraments. Seven sacraments. Seven sacraments. All right. So this is what a genuine, true Christian who's unmarried should uh, consider things that are for the Lord, belong to the Lord, that he may or that he may please the Lord. How he may please the Lord. That should be, should be. That doesn't always be, but that should be. And then in verse number 33, he that is married, what what do they, what does Kareth mean again? Kareth means? Be concerned about or worried about his wife. About the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Now, do all married men always please their wives? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, married women don't please their husbands. <laughs> right, that's true too. It, it works the same way. But uh, this is this is optimal. Optimal general Christianity. Optimal. Yeah. Please the wife. In other words, take care. Uh, it says in the book of First Peter, uh, she is the what? What kind of vessel is she? Weaker the weaker vessel. vessel. The weaker vessel. And it says, husband, what are you supposed to do in Ephesians to the wife? Love, love, love your wives. Even as what? Christ, Christ, Christ loved, loved the church, church and gave himself, himself for her. So you see, we're husbands. That's a terrific duty. We cannot hold up our wives as Christ loved the church. We don't know that we're humans. But that's the goal. That's the target. And that's uh, important. Uh, he cares for the things. That, how he pleases his wife. So, uh, things of the world. Now, in verse 33, the things of the world, what could that be in addition to that? A home. Maybe the home. Job. Job, the car, the income, the taxes, children, all these things. Uh, how even please away. Uh, we read 34, did we? Okay. A difference between a wife and a virgin. Now, what's that mean? No sex. No sex. Virgin, never been married. So the, the thoughts of the wife are different than... The one that's unmarried. The one that's unmarried. Yeah, yeah, John. Virgin's single. Virgin's single, and the, and the wife is, oh, is married. married too. Well, well, they're usually single. Virgins are unmarried. Yes. Unmarried is what the scriptures say. Uh, unmarried. Uh, and uh, in verse 34, the unmarried woman cares for things of the Lord. We went to around verse 35, right? 34. Oh, 34, I'm sorry. I skipped one verse. Uh, the unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord. I shall be pleased both holy in body and in spirit. Uh, uh, unmarried woman, if she it should be that she should care for the things of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, do all unmarried women, Christian women, care for the things of the Lord no. strongly? <laughs> yeah, they should. I mean, this is the thing. But if they're just babes in Christ or carnal Christians, they may not do that. But this should be. That's the standard. Care for the things of the Lord. How she may please and be holy. In body and in spirit. But the married one cares for what? Well, we've read this, how she may please her husband. See, in verse 33, how the man, how she please his wife, and here, how she may please her husband. Right. And it's, uh, do always the wives always please their husbands? No. no. Do the husbands always please their wives? No. no. So there's a lot of work to do yeah. in marriage. That's the, the, the focus of the, the unmarried versus the married one. Yes. That's right. That should be the focus. That should be the, the target. That should be optimal. The optimal life would be that way. Generally, Christians should do this and be uh, able to do that. Did you read 35 yet? No. Okay, let's read 35, 36, and 37 together. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age and needs so require, let him do that she will, for he sinneth not, let them marry. 
Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath proper power over his own will, and hath no decree in his heart that he will keep his virgin, doeth well. Questions at bftbc.org or give us a call, 856-261-9018. Give us a call, comment, or question, or just say hello. So verse 35, uh, speak for your own profit. What does that mean? Your benefit. Your benefit. In other words, Paul is trying to help married people or married women, married men, unmarried women, unmarried men. See, trying to help them, speak for the prophet. Not that they cast a snare upon you. What does that mean? Trying to, trap. trying to trap them. He's not trying to be a dictator against them. He's trying to help them for your profit, not your your snares. But that which is for that which is comely. What does comely mean? Profitable, appropriate. Profitable, appropriate. Appropriate, yeah. appropriate. That's right. Uh, and that ye may attend upon the Lord. What's that mean? Attend upon the Lord. Serve. Serve. Serve the Lord. Attend. Wait upon Him and serve Him. She's talking to genuine Christians here. Uh, without distraction. What does that imply? It just makes no sense. Makes no sense? No, just what it says. Oh, what does that mean, without distraction? Well, without, if you're, go ahead. Don't get off the issue. Don't get off the issue without distraction. What else? Go ahead. Well, if, you, if a virgin, if a woman is married and, and she wants to devote, you know, study and do this and everything in the Bible. Married or unmarried? Uh, a married one. Married, yeah. Uh, she has to work that in around her being a mother and a, and a wife and a unmarried woman. She just has to do what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. But what does this more make without distraction, working over without distraction? That's a distraction. All right, that's one. Yeah, Anna. So the, the, the daughter comes in and, and interrupts because she needs help with homework or something. All right. <laughs> Okay, without distraction, any distraction or interruption for homework. All right. That's but, true. That's yeah. well. She mm -hmm. might she might be making dinner when she would normally just continue on with whatever she was doing because she's not necessarily hungry, but the rest of her family is hungry. Mm -hmm. Or or she might just make something simple if not everybody. If she didn't have it's a just whole bunch of people to feed. So he wants them to. Oh, excuse me, yeah. Rick. I'm sorry. I was just thinking about, like, all of us battle with distractions even today. Oh, yes. No matter whether we're in this situation or not. I think yeah. the word, what he was trying to say, at least what my mm -hmm. idea about it, is that the relationship with the Lord has to be number one. Somehow, mm -hmm. if you try hard enough, you seek God, God will help you mm -hmm. to find that place that mm -hmm. God's number one. Yes. And even if you have other kinds of distractions, mm -hmm. but I think he means without distraction means... Um, there have been times where I've gotten sloppy and I didn't get into the word that day. Uh -huh. That was distraction. distraction. They took over yeah. and they distracted me from yeah. what I should have been. There was time, but I allowed myself to yeah. get caught. Now, like the, the other things, like with the kids and all, sometimes you can't. You just got to deal with them. Yeah. But if, if he's number one and he's a priority, somehow yeah. it'll fit in yes. between all those other distractions. Right. That's good. Yes, Tammy, and then the Vaughn. The difference between someone that's married and someone that's not married yes. is that you don't have those distractions mm -hmm. right. if you're not married, mm -hmm. because it's just you. That's right. You're just caring for yourself. Now, you have some distractions, but not, not those. That's right. right. Yeah. I mean, you're just caring for yourself. Right. If you want to wait to eat until, you know, 9 o'clock at night, yeah. you can do that. Right. Yeah, Vaughn. I think of my mom. She was a Bible studier. Yes. She studied the Bible. She's, and... Uh, but my father said it's all right if you get this. She and he paid for books and stuff. For her. Mm -hmm. And this was a way she was able to bear uh, taking care of my retired sister. Mm -hmm. And so um, he said, well, I don't want these books all over. I don't want this all over when I come home. Yeah. So she used to study every Thursday, mm -hmm. and she'd get all the books out and everything. And I never saw these much of these books out because when I got home from school, they were all put away. Yeah. Everything was put away. She was so she obeyed her. your dad and put the books away when he got home. Yes, but sure. so when he came home, she didn't, and he didn't like it if she was studying, like if she had a special book, like yeah. she was teaching science school, she'd be reading this book. He didn't like her sitting there reading that book. He wanted her. Yes, her you attention. Know, even though he didn't want to do anything with her, but sit there. Yeah. But, you know, he wanted her attention. <laughs> attention. He wanted her attention. <laughs> That's good. So this, this explains it very well. Yes, and without distraction. She learned a whole lot that way. Right, and that's she good. She learned a lot of Bible. Good. 
Because some of us can only be distracted more, maybe we know more. Know more about the Bible. <laughs> now, what's, what's the, Pastor Daniel, you something? It says, uh, what's the first word in verse 35, 36? But. Why do you think that's there? <laughs> Contrast. Contrast. See, without distraction, but he's going to give a distraction here. Mm -hmm. to, if any man think he behaves so uncomely toward his work, what does that mean? Improperly. Improperly. Maybe there's a distraction. Maybe a sexual situation come up. That's not right. If she passed the flower away, what does that mean? She's older. She's older, perhaps. If she need, if and needs so require, what does that mean? And needs so require. She needs to be married. needs to be married. She wants to be married. Let them do what? Marry. Do what he will. He, he says, let them marry. Yes, Tam. Is this referring to the father here? The man think that he behaves uncomely. Let them, this is not. I mean, give the father give the permission? Yes. yes. yes some have, some have uh, interpreted it that way. It's possible. Think that he behaves uncomely toward his virgin. So he may do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. In other words, regardless, they don't have to marry, but if it's if it's a distraction and so on, behave himself uncomely. Very sad situations. You better get married rather than be uncomely in activity. Uh, there's a lot of uncomeliness these days with men and women, boys and girls, having sex together, living together, not married at all, just, just uh, living in sin and fornication. It's a terrible situation, but let them marry. Uh, we read 37, did we? Yes. yes, we did. We did, okay. Yeah, Bill tells us what we read. He always remembers. What does nevertheless mean? In spite of In other words, he said, okay, let them marry. But see, on the other hand, nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart. What does that mean? Heart determination. Heart determination. Having no necessity. What does that mean? Not in a hurry. Not in a hurry. But hath power over his own will. What does that imply? He's self-controlled, self not going to have sex out of marriage, different things. He's self-controlled over his own will. And so to create in his heart, what does that imply? That he'll be uh, chased with this virgin. Yes, and it heart's a heart decision. Yeah, Anna? Well, I guess whenever I read this passage, I thought, well, I thought that this man that behaved, like, um, the man and his version. I thought that was like the father. Could be. Yes, yeah, sometimes. On like the basis of verse 38. Mm -hmm. So I guess. The, Could be. Verse 38 definitely. He that giveth her would be the father. Yes. I, I just really remember that. I mean, because if. I mean. If, because if you marry someone. Yeah, yeah, then they're your wife, not your virgin. Mm -hmm. Right, but if he desires that he will. What? Go ahead. We'll, we'll explain that in a few more verses. Uh, we'll get that. Later. But notice it says, "In his heart, he, he will keep his virgin. He doeth well." Keep in what sense? Protect her. Protect what else? Preserve. Preserve uh -huh. and not marry. In other words, in other words, if you have to marry, you marry. But if you if you're not in trouble, you don't have any sexual proclivities one to another. Right. Let it be just unmarried. All right, we'll stop right here at uh, verse number 37. But do you have any other comments or questions before we close? Well, if not, let's close the word of prayer. We thank thee, Father, for Paul. We thank thee for thy grace, giving him the opportunity to listen man to man, person to person, with the Lord Jesus Christ for three long years there in the desert. We thank thee for his letters. We thank thee for his books. Thank thee for this book of Corinthians. Give us wisdom as we discuss it. Help us to live what we have in the scriptures. Give us understanding of it. And then the willingness to follow what thou hast taught us. Bring us back safely for our Thursday Bible study and prayer service. Guide us and direct us the rest of this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.